Hi guys, Dane here and welcome to another weekly reading vlog. Dane reads. So I'm currently reading this bad boy which is the best of sci-fi 17 times infinity by Groff Conklin and this is basically a bunch of different sci-fi authors. Um, 17 stories by 16 authors because for some bizarre reason Rudyard Kipling gets two in here. I guess his stories might be shorter. Let's have a look. I guess so, I mean, not... Oh, one of them is a page. As easy as ABC and then McDonald's song. So I'm guessing McDonald's song. So McDonald's song is actually just part of this story by the looks of it. I don't know why it's given its own header. Oh no, maybe it isn't. Maybe it's a poem, I think, actually. And somebody's written Mac Who, and then they've crossed out the words holy in this poem and written Marxist next to it, as you do. So uh, yeah, we'll get to that one soon. But so far, I'm enjoying this. It's like a four out of five. Hello everybody, it's currently quarter past eight on the evening of Sunday the 28th of March. I am not feeling very well, I have some mental health stuff going and also a dodgy stomach, which both of them combine to not be very good. Uh, I'm currently reading Henry, the King Henry V by William Shakespeare. Uh, and then next up, I think it's called The Other Side of Paradise. Yeah, it is. There's, oh no, This Side of Paradise, which is F. Scott Fitzgerald. So I got that down there to read in a bit. So that's where we're at. Oh, hello, it is me. It is currently 5.52 on Monday the 29th of March. I still have quite bad stomach ache and like just food stuff's not going well. Uh, I'm trying to eat. It's just sort of coming straight back out of various orifices. Um, and so perhaps that's why I, I still feel very lightheaded and dizzy. I tried to go for a walk earlier up the hill, like just doing that, moving my head like that. Like I'm seeing spots in front of my eyes. Which isn't good, so maybe I'll keep facing forwards. Uh, yeah, I tried to go for a walk earlier up the hill and basically I couldn't walk properly. Um, so I kept like stumbling into the road and stuff. So I came back and didn't do my walk. Oh, that was too much. Sorry about that, I think I'm back now. Oh, okay, so yeah, I don't really know what to do. Um, I can't really get in touch with the doctors because they're not doing appointments. They're only doing appointments for life-threatening or serious stuff or whatever. And this wouldn't count. Uh, this is mental health related and IBS related, theoretically. I mean, I might have cancer, I don't know. There's definitely blood in my shit, which is supposed to be uh, not good. But, I don't know, That's that happens quite a lot to me, to be honest. So, um, yeah, anyway. So I can't really get in to see a doctor because they then they're not they're not doing in-person appointments except for anything that's you know considered serious or whatever and they don't do medication over the phone so this has actually been the same since last March when the pandemic first broke out so I don't really know what to do because like I don't know I seem to just be slowly getting worse and worse and I can't go to the doctors about it because I don't know. The one thing I did think actually is I can get to the doctors if I ring them up and tell them that I'm going to kill myself. Uh, if I do that, then it's considered urgent and then they'll see me. So I might do that even though it's false, but it's the only way I can think of to get treatment. Uh, anyway, I've still been reading. I've been reading King Henry. I finished reading King Henry V. I'm now reading This Side of Paradise by F. Scott Fitzgerald and it's all right. Um, I'm finding it very difficult to focus as you can probably imagine, but there have been some good lines in it. It's one of those where I, I keep forgetting what's happening, I keep having to reread over the same page again, and then every now and then we get a cracking line. Like, nobody seems to bore you, he objected. About half the world do, she admitted, but I think that's a pretty good average, don't you? It's below my average. So yeah, that's where we're at. Um, Super stressed with work as well, so I worked nine days last week. I know there are only seven in a week. I'm basing that on nine till five. I'm basing that that nine till 5.30 is a working day with an hour for lunch. So that's seven and a half hours times nine. 67.5 hours I worked last week. So just under 10 hours a day. Could be worse, I suppose. But that includes for, uh, Saturday and Sunday. Oh, I'm so tired and I still haven't like made a dent in things so there's all this art center stuff going on and people are just sending me stuff faster than I can do it so I've basically given up on trying to do it all now because um, they also don't pay me as much it's more of like a passion project for me but I've been having to turn away clients that pay literally four times as much because I've had so much art center stuff going on 
and because I'm looking at hopefully buying a house because the plan is if I can buy a house then at least I can be slightly more comfortable in my misery I guess you know because that's the other thing is like this anxiety and the depression that's coming with it and all the stomach issues like this isn't anything new um, like this all kicked off when I was about 24 25 and um, you know it goes up and down but I would say at the moment it's the worst it's ever been except for the time when I had a nervous breakdown and was off work for six months so yeah I've forgotten where I was going with that um, my mum also wants me to look at properties in Tamworth to go move back up to the north to be closer to her and my family which at the moment I'm kind of tempted by anyway this has been a cheerful start to this week's vlog I'm gonna go and do some other stuff I guess I'm gonna go get back to work It'll be the same old pattern of work until I pass out uh, I went to bed at midnight last night and got up at about noon my Fitbit says I had eight hours sleep but I don't believe that because I noticed what was happening was like I was falling asleep and then waking up within about 10-15 minutes and it would repeatedly happen like I fell asleep about a dozen times last night and I don't know what it was that was waking me up but then when I did wake up I had the stomach ache still going and like some feverish stuff and my heart rate was super slow as well it went down to 46 last night which is crazy low it, that's not normally my sleep and heart rate but oh well yeah happy times hello uh, it is currently oh my fitbit is dead but it's wednesday and uh i think i don't actually did i update you earlier i don't even remember uh but anyway i finished reading king henry the sixth part one two and three i gave each of those 3.5 out of five but i rounded them so the first part which had joan of arc in was great i gave that i rounded that up to four and uh, then the second one I rounded down to three and the third one I rounded back up to four. But for the purposes of this, they're all a pretty solid 3.5 out of five. And I was just reading them because they're the final unread own Shakespeare's that I had in the really nice Folio Society edition. I'm not gonna lie, part of the reason that I read them is because I will sell them now and they're probably worth a few bob. <laughs> but um, yeah, tick those off. Then I read uh, White Eye of the Needle by Chris Campbell. This is a poetry collection. I'll be doing a review of it and potentially sp uh, speaking to him for my uh, radio show as well. Uh, so these are poems on life, love and lockdown. They weren't like mind-blowingly good, but they were pretty good. So yeah, 3.5 out of five for those. And I'm now currently just getting towards the end of The Phantom of Menace, William Shakespeare by Ian Dersher. So Dersher does the, uh, you know, he writes plays in the, sh in the style of Shakespeare, but inspired by Modern, modern movies. So as well as these, he's also done Much Ado About Mean Girls and a Back to the Future one that I, I will get to eventually. Uh, and this one's shaping up to be a pretty solid 4 out of 5. Uh, better than the movie The Phantom Menace anyway, let's put it that way. So yeah. You coming up big? Oh, hello internet people. I, okay, you're having a little nip at me. It's Dane and Biggie here. It's uh, Sunday the 4th of April. He looks like he's about to attack my leg. Are you about to attack my... No, don't... <laughs> so that's it for that stuff. Uh, it's now Sunday evening, as I say. Um, trying to catch up with some work. I have so much to do. Um, still trying to avoid a nervous breakdown, to be honest, but that's okay. What else is new? Uh, books. Oh, I have had my copies of Scarlet Sins in. Ugh. Well, I'll show you first. So I want to take a photo of this to put on social media, but this is the, the official stack. So if you've got all of my books, it should look something a little bit like this. Uh, what, what the hell, I'll show you them all. Come on, let's get closer. Coming up to the house, that's a horror novella and screenplay. <clears throat> Eyes like lighthouses when the boats come home. This is poetry. Formally, the rise and fall of a social network, sort of literary fiction, techno thriller. This is alphabetically rather than chronologically, by the way. We have Meat, my most uh, recent novel. Um, horror novel set on a factory farm. No Rest for the Wicked, my debut. This is a supernatural thriller. That was the uh, book trope edition, which is no longer available. It is now available through uh, Dragon Moon Press instead though. Scarlet Sins, so this is what I wanted to show you, the new one. In stock, available now, message me. Nine pound, including a pen, a bookmark, and UK postage for a signed copy. International postage is a lot more. It kind of, not far off, doubles the price to be honest. Uh, Social Paranoia, How Consumers and Brands Can Stay Safe in a Connected World. This is non-fiction. Here we have Subject, Verb, Object. This is the anthology of new writing that I, I worked on a few years back. Brought some of my favourite indies together in this one. Then we have Driven, 
my first detective novel, like for book one, and this is the earlier edition, not the um, Encircle Publications edition. And this, this is the Tower Hill Terror, book number two in that series. Uh, the reason I actually keep, I keep my first print runs because I think, I don't know, in the future they will be worth more. Um, but also it's just nice to have those and to sort of see how far I've come along. Um, but anyway, when I ordered my copies of Scarlet Sins, they also accidentally, accidentally sent me two copies of uh, Gusto Singer by Marguerite McLean. So, I don't know what happened there. I don't know who that is. Okie dokie, then I read Asterix Gladiateur by Argosini and Eudazzo. This is a French a graphic novel, a BD, a bande dessinée. C'est uh, l'histoire d'Asterix et son ami Obelix. Et uh, il voyage, uh, no, et il voyage dans l'Empire Roman. Oui. Uh, they're looking for the, um, the druid, what's his name? Panoramics, although I think in the English edition he's Getafix. No, they're not looking for the druid, they're looking for the musician, the one who's like constantly being gagged and bound, Assurance Trix, uh, which I think means like Assurance. No, I'm not even gonna say that because I think that's wrong. But yeah, this was a four out of five, very humorous, very enjoyable. Then I read Later, the new novel from Stephen King. This was a four out of five as well, although um, I think I only really enjoyed it because I hadn't been hyping it up in my head and I hadn't been super looking forward to it. So when I got to it, like I didn't even know it was coming out until people started talking about it on booktube. Um, and it was okay. Uh, one of my friends, uh, Duncan Ralston, he's a horror writer. He asked on Twitter, he was like, do you think it was a trunk novel? Maybe. I think if it is a trunk novel, he's updated it to kind of make it feel more modern. If anything, the main thing I took away with it is that Stephen King is more down with the kids than I am because his main character was younger than me and so like he knew all these like childhood references and stuff that didn't really, you know, were after my time so I felt kind of old. But yeah, four out of five. Then I read Andrei Sapkowski, Season of Storms, The Witcher book. Uh, this is the final Witcher book that's out so far. So um, I think Sapkowski does have some other books which I'll probably check out but this is me up to date with the uh, Witcher series. Which is good because I'm trying to tick off a few series and it's nice to be able to tick this one off. Um, I gave this one probably a 4 out of 5. I think it had um, less of the like... Basically, what one of the things I've really liked about the Witcher books is how they normally have like this moral dilemmas to them. And um, Geralt the Witcher kind of has to decide between two evils and all of this stuff. And there was still some of that, but I think there was less of it. However, there was more storyline to it. So I think it worked, um, and yes, I shall be reading the next one as and when it comes out, if it comes out. And I am now reading Illuminated Poems by Allen Ginsberg and Eric Drucker. So basically Drucker is an illustrator. So this is like one of his illustrations for Howl, for example. It's really beautiful, a really beautiful book. Um, there are no poems, oh actually no, there are one or two in this that I think haven't been published elsewhere, so we will see. Because uh, when people say they haven't been published elsewhere, that was at the time this was published, right? So this was published when? I think he was still alive. April 1996. So presumably, since then, those poems have been added to the collected poetry of Allen Ginsberg. So, you know, take that as, as, as you will. But yeah, really cool book, actually. Uh, it's basically like a greatest hits of Ginsberg that's been illumin uh, illustrated, not illuminated. So yeah, if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, do check it out. I gave it a pretty solid four out of five. And uh, so I'm going to finish reading this, actually, because I haven't finished it. Although, I mean, I've read all the poems in the past and it's very cool. It's got the Ballad of the Skeletons in it. As I say, it's got Howl in it. Just some of the, I particularly like um, these ones, these like lino cut almost ones that are generally like monochrome or that one's got a blue tint to it or whatever. I, I prefer that, oh look, here we go. And some sex with another bearded man. That's with, um, what's his name, isn't it? That's with fucking thingy, Peter Orlovsky. Anyway, yeah, so cool, good stuff. But yeah, that is pretty much the end of this week's reading vlog. So as always, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and if so, what you thought of them. Hit that subscribe button for more and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.